In this episode, we'll talk about the boom microphones that are my favorites and what I would choose in each category from camera top shotgun microphones to budget, to prosumer, to professional. I've used a decent number of boom microphones, and so my goal here is really just to tell you my impressions of a variety of them, which ones I generally choose when I have the choice. Obviously, this does not include all boom microphones. I, there are so many in the world, and I haven't had a chance to use all of them. So we're just going to talk about the ones that I have the most experience with and which are my favorites. In full disclosure, I will put on the screen which of them I paid for with my own money versus those which were given to me free of charge. And all of the links below, again in full disclosure, are affiliate links. So if you purchase from one of them, I earn a small commission. Now to clarify, we are just talking about boom microphones here today. We will have a separate episode that talks about lavalier microphones and other types of microphones, say for example, for voiceover. Now some people are surprised to learn that boom microphones are sometimes not shotgun microphones. Shotgun microphones indeed are boom microphones, but they're not the only type of boom microphones. They're also what are often called in the music world pencil condenser microphones, or what I like to refer to as cardioids. And they're often used for indoor dialogue. They are non-shotgun microphones. They do not have interference tubes, which are the long skinny tubes that look something like this. They usually have the slits along them, and they have a very special operating principle, mostly for outdoor dialogue. You can use them indoors, although when you do use them indoors, there's a very small risk that you can get some phase issues when the sound source comes from an odd angle. So for example, if the sound is coming from an angle like this, relatively closely in most cases I find, you'll get sort of a warbling sound, which you can't really fix in post. So there are some risks to using shotgun microphones indoors, but it's not forbidden, and the microphone police aren't going to come arrest you if you do. So first up, let's take a look at the camera top shotgun microphones. Now, these are really good if you are doing vlogging or if you do YouTube talking head types of videos like this and you don't want the microphone in the frame. You can boom it up above the frame, down at you, or you can put it on your camera. Now, there's a risk. If you do put it on your camera and the camera is, say, five or six feet away, maybe one and a half to two meters away, it's going to sound far away. It's not going to sound super rich. So if you are going to buy a camera top shotgun microphone, you need to understand that. It's great if you're vlogging and you're up nice and close to the camera within maybe a foot and a half or something like that. But as soon as you get farther away than that, it's going to start to sound not as good. However, with these microphones, you can boom them above you. You can run an extension cable from your camera and put them on a microphone stand. We've got a video up here that shows you how to do that for less than $30 US. So let's talk about some of my favorites here. First of all, we're going to talk about the Tackstar SGC598. <laughs> That's this one right here. We reviewed this a long, long time ago. It runs on a single AA battery. It has a 3.5 millimeter connector to connect to your camera. Um, and so it just plugs into your camera's microphone input. And for its price, which is last time I checked somewhere in the maybe the $35 range, it does a surprisingly good job. Again, it's going to sound a whole lot better if you boom it just above your talent within, say, 18 inches, maybe 30 to 40 centimeters. But uh, that's where you're going to get the best sound. But if you do have to put it on top of your camera, it's better than nothing. Next in this category, we also have the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. Again, one of my favorites here. This one has a variety of interesting features. For example, it does do dual channel recording. So if you plug this into your camera, again, it has a 3.5 millimeter plug. You can actually record one channel, the left channel on your camera at the level that you set the gain here. And it also records to the right channel at a lower input level or a lower gain level. And what that means is that if you get too loud and the audio clips and distorts, that secondary track will still be okay in most cases. So it gives you a little bit more safety. It does have a high pass filter if you're operating out in the wind. And it does have a couple of different gain settings at plus 20 dB or minus 10 dB. We'll have links below for the reviews of each of these microphones. So you can dive in more detail on each of the mics. Next up in this category is the Deity VMic D3 Pro. Now, the difference between this one and the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, the main difference I would say, well, there are a couple, but the, the VideoMic Pro Plus has a replaceable battery. It comes with a lithium ion rechargeable battery in here, but you can also put AA batteries in there if you need to. The D3 Pro, on the other hand, has an inbuilt battery with a 51 hour rated powering time. 
It uh, does have this unique feature where you plug in the cable here, run that out to your camera or mobile device or to whatever you're recording, and it figures out what kind of device it is and it adapts its connection to work with that device. It's a pretty cool feature. This was actually one of the first camera top shotgun microphones that I know of to do that. It also has a high pass filter at 75 hertz and 150 hertz if you're working out in the wind. And that is something important to say. If you are gonna be recording outdoors, you really do need some wind protection and usually a foam wind cover is not really necessarily enough. You may need one of the fur covers as well. Most of these have those available. And if the company itself doesn't provide one, you can usually buy one from a company called Rycoat, which you can find on B&H Photo, for example. This comes with its own shock mount. It's a very good shock mount and the mic comes out of the shock mount as well, which is nice. So if for some reason you ever needed to replace this, you could certainly do that. Now, a couple of nice features about the shock mount that comes with it. First of all, you can adjust it to sit forward or not so forward on your camera, aft, I guess, if you will. And this allows you to A, move it back if you're shooting with a really wide angle lens and you don't want the microphone in the shot, or to move it forward if you're gonna be using the viewfinder on your, say, mirrorless camera, for example, while you're shooting video. So this gets out of the way so you can get your face or your eye right up to the viewfinder. So nice to have that ability to adjust. And on the bottom here, not only do you have the shoe mount, but you also have a 3 8 inch uh, receiver, which has uh, threads in it. So you can mount this on a standard microphone boom pole if you wanna do that as well. Again, see the in-depth review if you're interested in this one down below. The newest entry of this category is the Rode VideoMic NTG. It's very similar to the Deity VMic D3 Pro, which we just looked at. Uh, strikingly similar, actually. <laughs> Likewise, it comes with this Rycote shock mount, which is top notch. You can do the same thing where you can adjust the position of the shock mount forward or back to get it out of the way of your viewfinder or to get it out of the way of a wide angle lens. You have a 3.5 millimeter cable. It also auto detects what you plug into. You have a USB-C input for powering or charging the microphone. It has an inbuilt battery that is rated to last 30 hours. You do have a high pass filter. You have the safety track recording feature on this as well, which is nice. And you also have a minus 20 decibel pad. So if you're gonna be recording really, really loud stuff, that can be helpful as well. Both the Deity VMic D3 Pro and the Rode VideoMic NTG have these dials on the back for setting the input level or gain, which is really nice. And they're stepless. So it's just a continuous, uh, very natural sounding way to set the input level on your microphone. This one can also be used as a USB microphone directly into your computer. So if you wanna record directly to your computer, you can do that as well. The downsides, of course, it has an inbuilt battery. Um, for those concerned about the environment, which is a valid concern, I would say, um, this becomes e-waste when it's done, unless Rode comes up with a battery replacement program, and I don't believe they've said anything about that just yet. Hopefully they will, and that'll make this a non-issue. So which of these would I choose if I was only choosing one? Well, that's a tough call. I think it really depends. If you want replaceable batteries, user replaceable batteries, the VideoMic Pro Plus is a good choice. If you're on a super tight budget and you really can't afford more than $35, that's where the tax star comes in. If you want one of the newer microphones that can be used in more situations, these two here, the DD VMic D3 Pro and the VideoMic NTG are two good options. If I could only choose one, it's a tough one. It's really tough, but I think I'd probably go with the Rode VideoMic NTG. Next up, let's get into shotgun microphones that have XLR outputs. So we're talking about microphones that you would connect to a professional grade camcorder or cinema camera or to a dedicated audio recorder with XLR inputs. So here we're moving up into more of the professional range, but these are the really affordable options. Let's take a closer look at these. One that was very popular a number of years ago was the Rode NTG2 shotgun microphone. This was actually my first shotgun microphone. And this microphone has the ability to work with phantom power or you can pop a AA battery in here and that will power it as well. Now, this microphone was pretty decent. It also has a high pass filter, but what I don't love about this microphone are a couple things. Number one, for its price, it's not a bad sounding microphone. It's pretty good, but it really requires a preamplifier that is a really strong preamplifier that can provide a lot of gain. It didn't have a really hot output signal. So that made it kind of a non-starter in a lot of ways from the standpoint that a lot of people buying a more budget-oriented shotgun microphone 
Also, we're using a more budget-oriented recorder or camera. So in many cases, this was not a great fit. So for example, the Zoom H4n and this microphone, not recommended at all. If you get a really good preamplifier, then this can do a decent job, but uh, not my first choice in 2020. Here we're talking about microphones that are less than $300. The next one on the list would be the Rode NTG4. I don't end up using it a lot. It has some interesting features. It has an inbuilt battery as well, which I kind of have mixed feelings about. Uh, however, this does have a minus 10 dB pad, a high pass filter. It also has a high frequency boost. So when you put this in wind protection, the trick with wind protection is that while it does do a good job of preventing the wind from blowing on the capsule and distorting the sound, it does cut off some of the high frequencies. So sound can start to sound a little bit uh, muffled. And so for example, your S's and C's and things of that nature start to sound like the person has a lisp. And so this high presence boost is kind of a nice feature from that standpoint. It's a decent microphone. It has a slightly stronger output signal than the Rode NTG2, but it's still not my favorite sounding microphone. It sounds a little bit in the mid rangey so I don't necessarily recommend this one at this point. Next up in this category, and I don't have this microphone anymore, although I did have it for a while and I have used it a fair bit, is the Asden SGM250. It seemed to have a stronger output signal than the Rode NTG2 and the NTG4, but it also had sort of a mid-rangey sound to it, so it wasn't my favorite, but, but it definitely works. And again, on all of these, if you own one of these, and I'm not saying that it's the most amazing microphone ever, please don't take offense. These are just my impressions after using a whole bunch of different microphones. Biased with my own personal tastes and preferences doesn't mean that it's a bad microphone. It just means that it's not my favorite. And then finally is the Sony ECM-674. This one has kind of a bright sound to it, which means it's a little bit crisper, a lot more S's and C's. They're gonna come through in a very kind of emphasized sort of way. It does have a high pass filter on it. It's a decent mic. This one's a hard category here. It's hard for me to choose a favorite here. I don't really love any of these microphones and part of it's because I've been spoiled. I use much more expensive, much more capable microphones. But if you are operating in this range, if I had to say choose one, I'd probably go with the Sony ECM-674 or the Asden SGM-250 at this point in 2020. Personal preference. Other people may recommend others. All of them are capable. All of them will record audio and all of them will record decent audio. I find that probably the Sony or the Asden, actually the Asden would probably be my first choice. Tough call in this category. Next up, we'll talk about shotgun microphones in the $300 to $600 range. Now, this is really the tipping point from my standpoint. This is where you really start to see a lot of improved audio quality for the amount of money that you invested. Now, when you get past this category, past the $600 mark, you're still gonna get some improvements, but you're gonna pay a lot of money for relatively smaller improvements. So let's talk about the microphones in this category. First up, we have the Deity S-Mic 2. This is a shotgun microphone here that looks very similar to something we're gonna look at in the professional category. It kind of is, a Sennheiser MKH-416 clone in some ways. It looks a lot like it, and it actually sounds a lot like it too. <laughs> What's interesting about this microphone is that it doesn't have any switches. There's no high-pass filter. There's no high-frequency boost. There's no pad or anything of that nature, so it's pretty straightforward that way. But what's really interesting about it is that it is basically waterproof. If you drop this in some water, it may stop working for a short period of time, but once you let it dry out, it'll be good after that. They've coated all of the circuit board and things of that nature. So it's kind of interesting from that standpoint. That's a nice feature to have if you are gonna be working out in the elements. It's made out of brass. It does a good job at rejecting any sort of radio frequency interference, which you can pick up on some of the less expensive mics, especially those that are made out of aluminum bodies. But this one holds up really nicely. I've never picked up any sort of radio frequency interference on this. So it does a pretty good job in terms of overall sound. Again, it sounds a lot like the Sennheiser MKH-416 and I'll talk about the differences. It's not exactly the same, but similar. It has good self-noise performance. It's not gonna produce a whole lot of hiss, and that's definitely what is you're gonna start to see in this category. You're gonna start to see a lot less self-noise. Now, the little brother to this one is the Deity S-Mic 2S, which you can see here if we put them right next to each other. Um, about half the size, basically. So why would you want a short shotgun, or what I would, uh, actually, we used to call these short shotguns, <laughs> or at least medium shotguns. 
Um, now we have these newer ones that are quite a bit shorter. Well, this offers you a few things. It does have the water resistance. It does have good sound. It's not quite as focused a polar pattern. That is to say, you may, if you're, for example, using this indoors or even outdoors, if there's ambient sound around it, you're going to pick up a little bit more of the ambient sound on this because it has a smaller interference tube. And that can be okay. Um, I would say this is a really good all rounder. If you're going to use a shotgun microphone both indoors and outdoors, this one could be a really good choice in this category because with a shorter shotgun mic, you're not as likely to run into that situation again where the sound is maybe coming from an off axis position. Maybe you mis aimed it and didn't get an aim just right. You're less likely to get that warbling sound with a shorter shotgun microphone like this. So for Using both indoors and outdoors, if you can only buy one mic and this is all the budget you've got, this is a pretty good choice here. The next one in this category is the Asden SGM3500. It's basically a very similar mic to the S Mic 2S. It's a short shotgun microphone or what I would call maybe more of a micro shotgun microphone. And it sounds very similar. It didn't seem to perform quite as well as the S Mic 2S in terms of self noise and its uh, ability to reject ambient sound. So I would probably pass on that one. Next up is the Asden SGM 3500L. This is a longer version of the 3500. This one I quite like. This one's about $500 US. And you can see its interference tube is quite long. This one is really focused on capturing your sound source and rejecting anything that's off axis. So it has a much more focused polar pattern, which is gonna give you a cleaner sound overall. So. This one actually was quite impressive. If you're gonna be shooting outdoors and you need to isolate the sound you want and reject the sound you don't want, this one is a very good choice. Really quite like the sound of it too. Very balanced, very clean, not a lot of self noise. This one actually comes surprisingly to me actually recommended, the Asden SGM 3500L. And you can see here, if we compare it to the Deity S Mic 2S, its interference tube is a little bit longer and that's why it has that really good ability to focus the sound, get the sound you want, and reject the sound you don't want. Next up, we have the Rode NTG5. This one actually surprised me, and actually I really quite like this microphone. So Rode for a long time has had their NTG3 and NTG8, and they are in the next price up category. They're really popular microphones as well, in particular the NTG3. And the reason that it's so popular is that it sounds really great. <laughs> it also uses a different technology for its capsule. It uses what's called RF bias technology. And that technology is really helpful because what it allows you to do is it tends to hold up a lot better when you're working in especially humid environments. And that's actually something to consider. One of the enemies of microphones is water. If humidity or water condenses on the capsule of most microphones, they will start distorting and sounding horrible. And so basically you're kind of out of luck if you need to record sound. RF bias microphones tend to be much more immune to humidity. And even if some water does condense on their capsule, they generally will continue to work and sound good. And so that's where this kind of technology is really great. And so I would say in this particular category, this was probably my favorite microphone. Now, you might ask, well, what about that aluminum body? Doesn't that mean it's a lot more susceptible to RF interference, radio frequency interference? And in my test, it held up really well. I didn't get any sort of radio frequency interference. I don't know if it's the RF bias technology that prevents it from picking that up, but for whatever reason, it did really, really well. So this category, the $300 to $600 range, my pick is the NTG5. Now, is this microphone for everybody? No. The one thing you do need to know about this microphone is this voicing, the way it sounds, to my ear is very natural. That is to say, there's not a lot of that rich bass boost if you're looking for that. So if you're not looking for that and you're looking for something that sounds natural, this is a good choice. But if you're looking for a very broadcasty sound, this may not be the best choice. Nevertheless, in this category, if I've got to choose a shotgun microphone, this is the one I would choose. And then in our next category is the pro level shotgun microphones. Now I have three of them here to talk about today. These are gonna be greater than $600 US. And in fact, one of them significantly more than that. Let's dive in and take a look at those. The first one we already mentioned a little bit before and that is the Rode NTG3. This is a classic mic. A lot of people have put this to good use. A lot of YouTubers have used it and even professional location sound mixers sometimes use this microphone. A lot of them, for example, 
will kind of consider this a crash mic and they'll use it in situations where they may be going into kind of some chaos. <laughs> they may get, uh, they may be, for example, recording in a locker room where there's champagne flying um, and things of that nature. But in any case, this microphone sounds fantastic. It does kind of emphasize the bass quite a bit. So if you're not looking for that kind of broadcast sound, this may not be the best choice, but a lot of people really like that sound. And in fact, in a lot of ways, people consider this kind of the budget version of the Sennheiser MKH 416, which we'll talk about next. Great self-noise performance, great clean recordings. I think it sounds very good. The voicing is great. Again, a lot of rich bass if you're looking for that. Overall, a really great microphone. Next up, we have a classic, the Sennheiser MKH 416. This microphone was originally designed, it's gone through a few different iterations, but was originally designed back in the 1970s. And it has been a staple of production and location sound mixers for many, many years. It's a great microphone. It also uses the RF Bias technologies. Those are the two main companies that I know of that use RF Bias are Sennheiser and Rode. And Rode just uses it in some of their mics. Actually, Sennheiser has a larger line of microphones that use the RF Bias technology, and this is one of them. This is a fantastic sounding mic. Again, it does, in my opinion, kind of have a, a, a good bit of bass pickup, so it has that rich low end. But this one, relative to the Rode NTG3, also has kind of a high presence boost. Again, you have to remember that this microphone was designed back in the days when there was no digital recording. It was all recording just to tape. And tape responds a little bit differently. And so I think what they did here is they voiced it so that there was a little bit more high frequency response because tape had to generally kind of rolled off at the higher frequencies. And so to get those high frequencies, they, they added a little bit of additional presence here. So it's a really great sound. A lot of people also use this for voiceover. And again, it's super, super sturdy. And what's different about this versus the Rode NTG3 is that this polar pattern is a little bit more focused. So you're gonna pick up a little bit less at the back of the mic versus the front of the mic relative to the Rode NTG3. So really good um, polar pattern that's very focused to get the sound you want and reject the sound you don't want. I can't say anything bad about this microphone. There's a reason why a lot of people love this microphone. Only downside, of course, is that it is a $1,000 purchase. However, it's the type of microphone that can carry you through an entire career. So if you have the budget for it, it is never a bad investment. And then finally, when I'm doing a paid location or production sound mixing job, this is generally the microphone I choose. This is the DPA 4017 with the B preamplifier. You can see it's a pretty small microphone. Here's compared to the Asden SGM 3500L. And I believe this one has a, an aluminum body as well. This microphone sounds fantastic. It is probably my favorite sounding shotgun microphone. It also has a high pass filter built in. You'll note that the NTG3 and the Sennheiser MKH 416 did not. So your recorder will need to have those if you need those features. This also has a high frequency boost. So again, if you're putting it in some sort of wind protection, you can boost those high frequencies to compensate for the fur or the foam reducing some of those frequencies. So you'll get a more balanced sound that way. This microphone sounds absolutely fantastic. All of these three microphones in this category have great self-noise performance. That is to say they don't produce a lot of hiss. They have hot, uh, fairly strong output signals. So you don't need a preamplifier with a ton of gain to make them sound good. And you really just can't go wrong. It's been super durable. Really love this one. Now this one's interesting too because you can change the preamplifier that you use. They also have a shorter preamplifier that does not have these two features and it comes in at a much shorter length as well. So if you wanted to shorten this up some and you didn't need those features, you can do that as well. So that's the DPA 4017B. This is my go-to mic when I'm doing a paid location job. Next up, we'll talk about non-shotgun microphones. These I typically use for indoors. They can be used outdoors if you put good wind protection on them as well, but they're generally with a supercardioid or cardioid or hypercardioid polar pattern. So they vary a little bit in terms of how wide their polar pattern is and how focused it is, but they all do a really nice job indoors. They do not run into the same issue that shotgun microphones can sometimes indoors that I mentioned earlier, where if the sound source is a little bit off axis from the front of the mic, it can produce that warbling sound. These don't have that issue whatsoever. And often that's why location and production sound mixers will choose these for indoors. Now, the first in this category is a mic that I don't actually own that I borrowed for the review. 
and that is the Samson CO2. It actually comes in a set of two for only $100 US, or just about there. And it's a really impressive value for the amount of money that you spend. So for example, if you're shooting a lot of interviews and you need two microphones to get the best pickup on both of the people in the interview, Samson CO2 can do a pretty nice job. Has a decent sound. It's a little bit on the mid-range in terms of its focus. It does have a little bit of self-noise on the high end of the frequency range. It does pretty well on a boom pole as well in terms of handling noise. So if you are handling the boom pole and you happen to kind of rub your hand the wrong way on the boom pole, this does a pretty decent job if you use a good shock mount from picking up that noise as well. Definitely a consideration if you're talking about a boom microphone. And really overall, again, I think this is probably the best value for money. If you're on a tight budget, you want some XLR output microphones, you're gonna be doing interviews, pretty good choice if you can only go about $120 US. Now in the next category, the $200 to $500 range, you're gonna to start to see some pretty significant improvements in terms of audio quality. And the first one I wanna talk about here is the Octava MK012. This is a Russian made microphone. And this one runs about $220 US as I recall. This particular one has the cardioid capsule, which is not quite as focused, but you can also get a hypercardioid capsule. This one has a surprisingly great sound. In fact, it has a really rich low end, which a lot of people really like. And overall, just a very balanced sound beyond that when you get to the higher frequencies. So it sounds really nice. Now, the one downside with this microphone that I found is that it's very sensitive to handling noise and to movement. So if you are going to put it on a boom pole that you're hand operating, you probably are going to need a really good shock mount. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Again, really great sounding microphone. A lot of indie filmmakers really love this one. I like the sound of it. I've used it a fair bit, but you do need to invest in a good shock mount. Now, again, the nice thing about this one is it is a system. It can take other capsules as well. So even if you just bought one, you can later buy the cardioid capsule. It also has an omnidirectional capsule if you're going to do ambiance recordings or perhaps music recordings as well. But for filmmaking, probably the hypercardioid is a really good choice. Next up in this category is the Audix SCX1HC. It's a hypercardioid microphone as well. I borrowed this one to do a review some time ago and really quite liked it. Again, a very balanced sound, good off-axis rejection. It does well with handling noise, just overall a very good microphone. Now, its output signal wasn't the hottest, as I recall, um, but if you've got a good preamplifier behind it, it is a really good microphone. Now, by good preamplifier, I mean, not a Zoom H4n, <laughs> but if you get into the Zoom F series, like the Zoom F4, Zoom F8, Zoom F6, or in the Sound Devices Mix Pre line, you'll have plenty of gain to drive this microphone for very good recordings. Next up is the AKG Blue line with the CK93 capsule. This is a hypercardioid capsule as well. Again, it's a modular system, so you can change out to different capsules if you choose to do that, so you get a little more value for your money that way if you are going to do other types of recordings. This one was a little bit cleaner than the Audix in terms of its overall self noise. And again, a very balanced sound, which I really liked. And this one does very well with handling noise. So you still need a shock mount for any microphone, but I felt like you would run into fewer issues of picking up boom handling noise with this microphone versus the Audix and certainly versus the Octava. And finally, while it wasn't actually made for recording dialogue, it was really made for recording music as an overhead mic for drums or for other musical instruments is the Rode NT5. This has a cardioid polar pattern, so it's not quite as focused, but if you can use it in close, it sounds really fantastic. Uh, it's one of my favorite choices in the maybe $220 range, and so I really like it. So if I had to choose one in this category, which would I choose? For the overall sound, I really, really like the Octava. And I like the fact that you can change out the capsules to hypercardioid, cardioid, omnidirectional. It's a great sounding microphone, but again, just keep in mind, you've got to invest in a good sh shock mount, preferably something from Rycote or something in that price range. So that's a significant investment. So if you spent $220 on your microphone, probably gonna have to spend at least $100 on your shock mount. Next, we move into the professional category. This is the $500 plus range of indoor boom microphones. In this category, the first one we're going to talk about is one of my favorites from the past. This is the Audio-Technica AT4053B. Now, when I say the past, that just means that when I first invested in this microphone, I used it almost exclusively <laughs> because I do record mostly indoor dialogue. 
doing corporate video and things of that nature. And this one got a lot of use. It's a great sounding mic. It's a pleasing sort of balanced sound, which sounds good on most voices. Great self noise performance, better than any of those in the previous category. That's where you're going to really start to see big improvements in terms of self noise is when you get up into this $500 plus category. So that kind of is a guide, perhaps, if you're trying to figure out, okay, should I upgrade? And you're saying, well, maybe should I upgrade from the Octava to the AKG Blue Line or the Rode NT5? Uh, you're not going to see necessarily a huge difference there. But once you move up into this category, I think you're going to see a pretty substantial difference in terms of self noise. This is a fantastic microphone in that price range. In fact, this is probably the least expensive one we're going to talk about in this price range that I feel like really qualifies as a professional grade hypercardioid indoor boom microphone. Now it has a couple of things. It has both a high pass filter and it has a minus 10 dB pad. This one actually, I think was probably designed for mostly recording instruments, but I think it works beautifully on dialogue. Now it can sound a little bit harsh on voices that have a lot of high frequency content. So a lot of sibilance, like when you say the letter S or C, that kind of sizzling noise. Because this has a very balanced overall uh, voicing, it picks up all the different frequencies quite evenly. It can sound a little bit harsh on those voices, but it's actually capturing what's there. So anyway, great sounding microphone. If you're looking for something in about the $700 range, this I think is a great choice. Next up, we're gonna talk about the Sennheiser MKH-50. Now, this microphone is a classic for indoor booming, and it is, part of the Sennheiser MKH line, which means it is a RF bias microphone as well. So we talked about those different technologies when we were talking about shotgun microphones. This one fits in that same category. So again, if you're in high humidity situations, this microphone will hold up well. It's a super durable microphone. It's been used on a ton of different movies and television shows. So you've heard this microphone most likely before. It's a, it's a classic. To me, the, the one thing that kind of characterizes this microphone is that it sounds aggressive to me. It's something like, you. I think it's a great fit for like an action movie and things of that nature. It can sound a little bit too aggressive sometimes if you want a really smooth sound from my point of view, um, but overall, it's a great sound. It has a very good focused polar pattern, virtually no self noise and great microphone, super durable, great investment. Next mic is the Sennheiser MKH 8050. This is basically the new generation of the MKH-50 from my point of view. They've done a couple things. You can now actually replace the preamplifiers. Um, so you get a little bit more, you get some options there. You can get a preamplifier that also has, I believe, a high pass filter on it. But this is super tiny. If you're gonna boom this on the end of a boom pole and you're gonna be booming all day long, this one's a dream to use because it's so small and so light but it has a lot of the same characteristics. The voicing is actually a little bit different than the original MKH-50. Again, I believe the MKH-50 was designed in the analog recording days, so it has kind of a little bit more of that high frequency boost. This microphone has a great sound to it too, though. Very, very smooth, warm sound. It's not mid-range focus. It's, it's probably actually, there's a little bit of a cut in the mid-range, I would guess. Very slight, but enough that it sounds fantastic on most voices. This is my go-to indoor boom microphone when I have the choice to use something a little bit more expensive. Obviously, it's not going to fit everyone's budget. I believe it ran about $1,200 when I got it. I don't know if the price is still the same now, but it's a significant investment. But when I do indoor booming, this is almost always the microphone I reach for. Next up, we have another classic in the location and production sound mixing world for film and video, and that is the Sheps Colette CMC 641. It's a combination of the MK41 capsule, which is a super cardioid polar pattern. So it's again, a little bit tighter, more focused than a standard cardioid, but not so focused as a hypercardioid. It sounds really, really nicely in terms of its off-axis sound. And this is a microphone where the company, Sheps, is very focused on capturing a very flat frequency, a very accurate sound. And I think they've really accomplished that. It's a great sounding microphone. It can be a little bit harsh though. If somebody has a harsh voice, this is gonna record it harshly <laughs> because it's a harsh voice. Um, but what it, it does very good at is capturing all the sound that's actually there very evenly. And then in post, you can do all sorts of EQ 
to really kind of fine tune it and make it sound sweeter. It is a pretty pricey microphone, so it's definitely an investment at $1,600 to $1,700. And um, a lot of, again, it gets, it's kind of like a career microphone again. If you buy this, generally, I haven't heard of a lot of people that were disappointed with this microphone. The Sheps microphones tend to have a rough time when you get in really humid environments. That's where the Sennheisers are going to hold up a little bit better, the Sennheiser MKH microphones, so the 8050, the 50, the 416. Um, this one can struggle a little bit. And in fact, it comes, when you buy it in a kit, it comes with a special little container you can put the capsule in if you are going to be moving into a humid environment. And the idea is you leave it in that little container, and it's an airtight container, until things kind of equilibrate. <laughs> so for example, if you're going outside by the beach, you would leave this in that container until all the kind of water is condensed on it and it kind of gets up to temperature of where you're at. Then you would take it out and put it on the microphone, and generally you'll get good results that way. But um, just something to keep in mind if you do shoot in those types of environments, jungles, rainforests, beaches, things of that nature. Now, of these microphones in the pro-grade indoor booming category, which do I choose? Well, I own the ones that I've talked about, and my first choice is usually the Sennheiser MKH8050. But of course, I've got all of them, so when I'm doing two or three person interviews, I've got a variety of choices and I can kind of tune the microphone or choose the microphone for the timbre of the voice that I'm trying to mic. So if someone has a really bright voice, I might put the Sennheiser MKH 8050 on them. If someone's got a little bit of a darker voice, I might put the Sheps on them. So again, if I could only choose one, I'd probably choose my MKH 8050. Now here's a little bit of a bonus in the professional category. This is a relatively new microphone, actually set of microphones. These are the Rode TF5s. It comes in a stereo pair, stereo matched pair, so they are voiced pretty much identically. They actually test them at the factory to make sure that they are um, voiced the same. And so these are actually made for stereo recording, and specifically they were designed for recording music. That's why I put them in a bonus category here. They're not necessarily something you would choose first for dialogue, although they sound quite good on dialogue as well, maybe a little bit on the bright side. So these can be really useful for recording stereo ambiance as well. So if you're trying to record an interior ambiance or maybe an exterior ambiance, if you put it in a good wind protection, this can be a great choice for that. Really like these microphones. I actually used them recently for recording a guitar, one on the kind of the base of the fretboard and the other one closer to the body of the guitar and was able to mix those quite nicely to a very nice effect. So I got the kind of the very good articulation on the strings, but also kind of the rich bass from the body of the guitar, beautifully recorded with these microphones. So the question I get a whole lot is, which of these microphones should I buy? And I think it really depends, but there are a few things that I would suggest that you consider. Number one, do not go into debt to buy one of these microphones. You can make some really good recordings, even with a fairly affordable ones. So for example, on that camera top shotgun microphone category, that tax star doesn't have the greatest shock mount, isn't the most durable thing in the world. It's not the greatest microphone in the world, but if you learn how to use it and use the right techniques, you can actually get some pretty good sound out of it. So that's the first thing. Don't go into debt to do to purchase one of these microphones. However, on the flip side, don't throw all of your money into a camera body or into lenses when you don't have decent audio recording equipment. You need good audio recording equipment. People say, you know, 50% of the experience is sound. Well, and we've also heard a million times, people are more willing to put up with bad visuals as long as the sound is good, but as soon as there's bad sound, they tune out. They, their suspension of disbelief is lost and they're pulled out of the story, so on and so forth. So definitely need to record quality sound and to do that, you need the right tools. The good news is, is that with audio recording gear, especially microphones, those will last you a whole lot longer than any camera body will. And I think in a lot of cases, they probably will last longer than lenses. Maybe, maybe not. Depends on how well you take care of them. But overall, microphones are a great investment. So that's something to consider. Now, as for upgrades, there are these thresholds that we talked about. So I think, for example, with the shotgun microphones, there appears to be a quality, audio quality threshold at around $300. So once you bump up into that $300 range, you can get some significantly better audio. And then there's another bump once you get into that $500 plus range. So definitely something to consider there. If you're talking about upgrading from one microphone in the $300 category and less than $500 category to another in that same category, 
you're not necessarily going to have a massive improvement in overall sound quality. So that may not be a worthwhile investment if that's the goal. But if you're just trying to get a second microphone to record interviews or something of that nature, then that makes sense. Likewise, for the indoor boom microphones, it feels like there's a pretty significant difference once you get to the $200 plus range, and then another threshold where you'll see a significant improvement in audio quality when you get to the $500 plus range. So for example, that Audio-Technica AT4053B, really, really substantial improvement from the lower category in my experience. So if you wanna get the most value for the money, make sure you're upgrading beyond those little thresholds that I just pointed out here. So overall, I hope that was helpful for you. Get out there and make some great sound. If you've got any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Bye.